Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're starting a new playlist on the electric field. What is the electric field? Well, an electric field is a region of space affected by charge that's nearby. Now, that doesn't yet tell you what it is, and what we're going to do is go through a series of, of descriptions that help us understand what an electric field is. But essentially, an electric field starts at a positive charge and ends at a negative charge. So the direction of the field is always directed from the positive side, from a positive charge to a negative charge. One way in which you can tell an electric field exists is by placing another small charge inside the electric field. If you put a positive charge in the electric field, it will experience a force in the same direction as the electric field, from positive to negative. If you place a negative charge in the electric field, then that negative charge will feel a force in the opposite direction of the field, from negative to positive. We can actually figure out the magnitude of that force. It is simply proportional to the size of the charge you place in the field and the magnitude of the field. In other words, you can calculate the electric field strength by measuring the force on a small charge you place in the field. Simply take the force, divide by the charge, and you have the magnitude of the electric field. Also notice that the electric field is in the same direction as the force if a positive charge is placed in the field. Notice that we also represent an electric field by these lines that seem to emanate from these positive charges on, on top of this object right here. Or we can represent the electric field by these straight lines right here, emanating from positive charges and ending on negative charges. Assuming that there's a metal plate here that has additional positive charge and a metal plate that has additional negative charge, you can see that the electric field goes from the positive charges to the negative charges in that direction. So let's read some of these descriptions to see if we can kind of understand what an electric field is. First of all, it says that it exerts a force on a charge placed in the field. So an electric field is a region in space such that when you put a charge in that space, it feels a force. A positive charge will feel a force in the same direction of the field. A negative charge will feel a force in the opposite direction of the field. Next, we can read here that it can be detected by placing a charge in the field and observing the effect on the charge. So normally, you wouldn't know that there's an electric field around you, but if you place a charge in the field and then you observe what happens to that charge, you can see it experiences a force or accelerates because of the force that it experiences. You can see the effect and that tells you there is a, an electric field there. Next, and maybe I'm in the way here, so let me move over this way. It says here the strength of the field is proportional to 1 over the distance squared from the source of the field. So the source of the field typically are charges. So positive charges are the source of electric field. The farther away you go from the, the, the source, the charges, the weaker the field gets, and not just linearly so, but 1 over r squared, meaning if you're twice as far away from the source, the field strength is now only one-fourth as, as strong. Now, there's some exceptions to that, is when you have a field between what we call two plates that are very close together, but we'll go into more detail of that later when we talk about capacitors and capacitor plates. Next, we can read here that the field can be represented by electric field lines. So these lines are called electric field lines. And what they do is, since the electric field is a vector quantity, it has both magnitude and direction. In other words, electric field has a direction because it always goes from positive to negative charges. Well, it doesn't go, but it's directed from positive to negative charges. And um, it also has a strength, so the, the field can be stronger as you get closer to the source and weaker as you go farther away from the source. Now, the electric field lines show you the strength by how dense the lines are. When the lines are close together, then the field is stronger. When the lines are farther apart, then the field is weaker. And that's how those electric field lines are a good representation of the electric field in that respect. You can also call them arrows, and again, it indicates magnitude and direction of the field. The direction of the field is from positive charge to negative charge. Just like we mentioned before, whenever there is a field and there's a direction, let's say it goes from bottom to top, that means that it, the, on the bottom there's positive charge and at the top there's negative charge. So that's always how we know the direction of the field. The strength of the field can be calculated. Now we had one way here. We can place a test charge in the field 
and then measure the force on that test charge and then say that the electric field is simply the force divided by the charge you place in the field. But it can also be calculated like this. It is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, now, or epsilon sub naught as I like to call it. Well, we'll talk about this in just a moment. Also times the charge divided by the distance from the object or from the charge squared. So the stronger, the, the greater the charge, the stronger the electric field. So the more charge you place on here, the stronger the field becomes around there. And it's, it's proportional as 1 over the distance squared, as we mentioned before. The farther you go away, the weaker it gets. Twice as far away, 1 fourth. Three times as far away, 1 ninth the strength. But then we have this 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. Sometimes this fraction, 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, is also called k k being 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons uh, meter squared per coulomb squared, but we will talk about that in some later examples. Now, that epsilon sub naught has the value by itself of 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared per newton meter squared. Now, what is this epsilon sub naught? Well, this epsilon sub naught is called the permittivity of free space. 1 over that represents the opposition of space to forming an electric field. In other words, the greater epsilon sub naught is, the more difficult it is to form the electric field, the weaker the electric field becomes. The smaller epsilon sub naught is, the stronger the electric field becomes. And that is evident by realizing that epsilon sub naught is in the denominator. Make this bigger, this becomes smaller, make this smaller, this becomes bigger. Space, free space out there, has the property that there's a certain amount of permittivity to form an electric field or opposition to form an electric field depending upon how you want to look at it, either in fraction form or by itself. But what that means is that the, if you are in a different location where this is a different value, then you have a different strength electric field. So there seems to be some relationship between the properties of space and how strong an electric field can be formed by placing charge in that free space. By the way, when you're inside a dielectric material, it turns out that the, that the uh, permittivity inside the dielectric is some constant times epsilon sub naught, which is, of course, the permittivity of free space. And since k is always greater than 1, if you're not in free space, this is therefore a bigger number, and therefore the electric field is weaker inside the dielectric material. And we'll see a little bit more about that as well. What's interesting is that the units of epsilon sub naught, the units of the permittivity of free space, is equal to f over m, f being farads, and m being meters. And so a farad is a measure of capacitance. It's a unit that we use to measure the capacitance of a capacitor, and a capacitor is able to store charge. Let me get out of the way here. So it gives you an indication of how much charge can be held by indicating the capacitance of a material. So free space, in a way, has a way to hold charge, causing an electric field to exist. So there's some relationship there between capacitance, the capacity to hold charge, and the capacity to set up an electric field. Again, there's some property of, of space that allows us to do that, or not us, of course, but nature to do that in a certain way. And then here at the end, we can say that the larger the electric field, the larger the forces on charges. So ultimately, Charges placed in space form an electric field, and the more charges you place, the greater the electric field strength, and the stronger the field, the more effect it has on other charges you place there. So in other words, electric field allows charges to interact with one another, and that's basically the purpose of an electric field in space. Without an electric field, there wouldn't be any interaction between charge objects and between charges, and then nothing could exist because it's ultimately the forces between charges that holds the atoms together and that causes atoms to form molecules and have that interaction in that respect. So a very necessary thing for matter to exist and something that, of course, we're going to learn all about as we're learning more about electricity and magnetism. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of what an electric field is.